So I'm here today to talk about the, the Special Values Investment Trust, uh, which is one of the, the three funds I run at Fidelity, um, and, and talk specifically about sort of some of the advantages of an investment trust um, over the, the open-ended funds, and, and then also talk about just how I manage money as well um, across all the strategies. So the first bit is, is talking specifically about the investment trust. So <coughs> this slide here we're using uh, general marketing uh, discussions for, for all three of the funds to show that the key difference between the, the three funds that I manage and it's, it's all about the market cap differentials. So overall I very much am a, a mid and small cap biased investor um, and in special situations which is the, the big open ended fund uh, that I run, uh, small cap is about 50% of, of what I do. But when you go to the, the investment trust which is still benchmarked um, against the all share index and is, is looking to outperform that index as, as well as produce absolute returns over the medium term. You can see that small cap is more like 60% of, of the trust. Um, and the reason for that, despite the same benchmark, is that there's much more flexibility in an investment trust structure because you're not worried about inflows and outflows. So you don't need to have a liquidity buffer. You don't need to worry about people selling your fund at the wrong time. Because unfortunately, what you often see is in periods where markets are going down, investors get nervous and they move to, to cash. And that's often the time when you see the best opportunities out there, especially if you are, like myself, a contrarian investor and is, is looking for opportunities where, when others are fearful. And so I think that key advantage of the, the investment trust of not having those outflows at the wrong time it is why you have the ability to invest more down the market cap spectrum in this type of structure than, than you do in an open-ended fund. The other key difference we'll go on to is in the, the next slide. So this talks about how I use derivatives in the, the investment trust. So the, the open-ended funds that, are, that I run as well also have the ability to, to use derivatives. But again, because you're not going to have inflows and outflows, and therefore you're less worried about liquidity, you have more confidence to, to use these derivatives. So first of all, the, the trust tends to run geared. Um, so we run about an average 110 net market exposure. So borrowing about 10% of, of the trust to invest in stocks. And clearly in an up market, that gives you more absolute performance. It also amplifies your underperformance in, in a down market. Um, what's nice is today you can use CFDs to, to do so. So 10, 15 years ago, you had to use bank borrowing, which was very inflexible. So you had to, to pay for that bank borrowing, even if you weren't using it, you were often paying sort of five, six, 7%, certainly in times of higher interest rates. Whereas today, um, the cost of borrowing is sub 1% and you only use it when you're, you're actually doing it. So I can move the borrowing up and down every day if I, I so wished. And so that gives an awful lot of flexibility to the trust. The other things that we do in derivatives are in these bars. So you can see that the shorts in the red. So there's about 7% of the, the fund short. So it means we can take advantage of where we see overvaluations of stocks as, as well as undervaluations. So if we think a company is overvalued and there's likely to be negative change, you can enact that. And again, while you can do that in open-ended, the, the, the better liquidity here, the more certainty you've got allows you to go down the market cap spectrum. And so some of the smaller cap shorts, which can have more substantial percentage changes, uh, are just in the trust rather than in the, the open-ended fund. The other thing we're doing today in special values, and this has been a feature for about the last two years, um, since we've seen markets performing very strongly, I'd say the market average is now a slightly above history, particularly in the, the mid-cap space. So I'm not sure there's great value out there on a market level, but there is good value, I think, still in, in some stock-specific opportunities that I'm finding. So what I've done is I've actually put a short on the broader index, bringing down some of that mid-cap overweight exposure in the FTSE 250. And again, the liquidity is there in the derivative markets to, to do that in the, the smaller AUM size. It isn't there if you were trying to do this on the, the, the fund, which is the special situations fund, which is about three billion pounds in assets. So again, those are two key advantages of the, the trust over the, the, the open-ended process. The next couple of slides go on to talk about my, my overall positioning and, and how I run money across all of the strategies. So very much when I'm thinking about stocks that, that I want to, to buy for investors, I'm thinking very much about, first, 
how much of investors' money could I lose in this position? And I think it's very important to think about both the downside and the upside in all positions. And I very much think about the downside first. And this involves several different factors. First of all, looking at balance sheets, they're very important. Um, if there's debt on a balance sheet, it massively amplifies your ability to, to lose money if things go wrong, particularly if that is not supported by earning streams which have some kind of stability to them or assets which are also on the balance sheet. I also think valuations are very important. So I like price to book and EV to sales versus history. So even if you are buying stocks which have been underperforming that are out of favour, that doesn't necessarily mean they're yet cheap. So important for me to see where those valuations are absolutely versus history. Also look at the, the business model risk. So is this a business where earnings can change very quickly or, or is it something with stability in, in those earnings? So again, giving you an idea of how supportable different balance sheet structures are. It's only once I've established that margin of safety for the, the stock that I then go on to think about what could change, what could make the stock more valuable in the future. <clears throat> so there's two types of broad change that I'm looking for. The first of which is internal to the company, and the next one I'll go on to next is, is sort of external. So I'm not looking to buy sort of great businesses or bad businesses. I'm just looking to buy businesses which can improve their fortunes from, from current levels. And often that is because things have gone wrong recently and things aren't going well. And so it's much easier to, to fix a problem that, 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 that's occurred rather than trying to move the business to an area it's never been before. But again, you do see some examples of, of those where just a good business becomes a, a great business. A change in management team is a, a key thing that I look for in companies. So that it's generally much easier to fix problems and change things if you are new to a company rather than being responsible for, for some of the problems that, that occurred in the past. Additionally, there can be many different types of change within a company. So it might be a cost cutting, um, it might be a new product, it might be a, a, an ability to, to go to new markets. So hearing firsthand from the management teams what they're trying to change, but then importantly, not just taking their word for it, cross-checking that using the Fidelity analyst team. So we've got 40 analysts in London looking at Europe, so a big team, and they can go away and meet companies meet competitors, meet suppliers, um, meet industry consultants to see is that change credible and then is it being delivered in the marketplace going forward. The second type of change that we look for is an external change, so a change in the industry in which a company um, plays. And so <clears throat> one of the things I really like to see is when the fortunes of an industry are bad, and returns and profit on an industry level has been falling, does that mean capital is being withdrawn or does it mean competitors are, are going out of business? I particularly <coughs> like to, to see that happening because it means returns are likely to increase for, for everyone that's left. So an example of this would be sort of the banking sector where you see an awful lot of companies withdraw from the, the banking space through the, the crisis and a big consolidation there. Uh, and so that's one of the, the, the big holdings in the, the fund today. So the next section then just talks about, <coughs> so that th this is the concept of how I invest, but sort of where is the, 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 the fund uh, invested today. So this talks about sort of three ideas that I, that I really like, and then also three ideas which uh, have been rejected. So I am a value contrarian investor, and I do like stocks that have done badly and that are out of favour and are now cheap versus history. But I always have to have that margin of safety, the, the strong balance sheet, and looking for, for positive change. And in the three cases here, Shell, Ultra Electronics, and Lloyd's, I think there are positive changes both within the companies um, and then also within the industries, um, particularly so for, for banking and oil. Um, it's more an industry change at Ultra. In contrast, the, the three stocks at the bottom, I would class these of all having reasonably weak balance sheets. So all of them have debt on the balance sheet um, and therefore the downside protection is lacking. Additionally, particularly in the case of UK supermarkets and commodities, you're not actually seeing supply being reduced in those industries. So yes, returns have come down, profits are falling, but unfortunately you're still actually seeing new mines continue to come on, particularly in iron ore and then in UK supermarkets, you're continuing to see competitors 
particularly the discounters, continue to open new space, and that makes it increasingly hard for the incumbents to continue to generate a profit from their existing stores. So while these stocks have obviously done badly, and these are some of the biggest losers in the, the FTSE over the last couple of years, they're not stocks which um, tempt me to buy into today. This then gives an idea of a, of a number of stocks which are for in the fund, so I don't expect you to, to read all of these, but it, I think it's a good slide because it gives an example, a good cross-section of some of the types of ideas that are, that are in the fund, <coughs> and I think shows the diversity of ideas there. So I think you can find these change stories that are unloved in most sectors of, of the market today, <coughs> and therefore I like to sort of hunt them out right across the market cap spectrum from the likes of of Shell at the top end of the market, right down to sort of real tiddlers like Elegant Hotels, which I bought recently uh, on, on the A market at the bottom. So the fund really is a, a go anywhere fund and has lots of different types of ideas, seeing both those internal and external changes. Some of them are, are well developed, so the likes of UDG Healthcare, it's a stock that's been in the trust for the entire three years that I've run it. It's been a very good performer. There's been substantial change in the underlying business through both organic changes and then also acquisition and disposal activity. Also a relisting of the company from Ireland to the, the UK, so a big change in the, the corporate structure of the, the company as well, really showing sort of the number of different changes that, that I was looking for there. Other things that the likes of Shell or Ultra Electronics, these are much newer, just been introduced to the fund sort of more over this year and are still much earlier in their, their change prospects and, and haven't yet performed for the fund. So just to sort of sum up in the end, this, this shows that <coughs> the three years over which I've run special values, the good news is performance has been very strong versus the market. And I do think if you are looking into these unloved areas of the market, especially down the market cap spectrum, there is the ability to add significant value through this process. And then using the, the advantages which a, a closed end trust gives you in terms of the ability to have more confidence in that derivatives use, that the gearing, especially in what obviously has been an up market, also gives you the ability to, to further power up that performance and outperform over the longer term. Um, and I'm very happy to say that Special Values over its 20-year history ha has had a very strong performance under both myself and obviously Sanjeev and, and Anthony before me. <coughs>